critical. Well, what about repenting? A lot of people say, well, you have to repent of your sins. You have to, you know, you have to believe and repent. Believe and repent. And they'll say, these two things go together. You can't tie them apart. You can't do it. You know, believe and repent. But see, the problem is what they say, and this could go an entire sermon of its own. But the vast majority of people, when they say you have to repent, they just add repent of your sins or they automatically think that that's what it means. You have to repent of your sins. You have to turn from your sins. You have to repent of your sins. Let me tell you, the word repent all by itself does not mean turn from your sins. Not at all. The easiest way, the easiest definition I can tell you what the word repent means, just rethink. The word pent is, is, the, is the root word for, for thinking. Um, you know, I believe it comes from Latin, but uh, regardless, if you know any Spanish, you know pensar means to think. It's the same, again, the same root word where the word comes from. Repent just means you're rethinking something. You're changing your mind. So what the word repent means. If it had anything, if it inherently was talking about sin, like turning from your sins, well, then that would make God a sinner because God repents in the Old Testament. You can see God repenting. It says, even in Jonah chapter 3, verse number 10, the Bible says, And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he thought to do unto them. So God repented. God was going to destroy Nineveh. But he changed his mind when he saw their works. So the Bible says, it. Jonah 3.10, write that down if you don't ever use that. When you come across someone who, who says, no, you have to repent of your sins, go to Jonah 3.10. It has all that you need. It's very clear and very concise to prove that person does not have to turn from their sins in order to be saved. Because one, it shows that God repents, so you can you immediately just destroy their definition of the word repent. So was God a sinner? Did God have to repent of any sin? No, he doesn't. Because that's an important point to get across because people just hear the word repent and they just automatically in their mind are going to add of your sin, of your sin, of your sin. It's not of your sin in every case. You can't understand the Bible with that, with that definition of repent. You're, you're going to be all screwed up. So one, it shows that the definition is different, but two, it shows then and defines that if you're turning from your evil way or turning from your sin, it's works. So the Bible says that God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way. Turning from your wicked way. So I'll say, well, well, is repenting of your sin the same as turning from your wicked way? Yeah, it is. And the Bible defines that as works. Why? See, people use this phrase, oh, you're turning from your sin to the Savior. But that's not, what, that's not, that doesn't even make any sense. Because if you're turning from your sins... And look, we all, we all ought to turn from our sins. I believe in this. I believe in turning from your sins, but not in order to be saved. If you turn from your sins, what's going to happen as a result is you are going to be obeying God's law. Because what is it that's making you sin? It's God's, you know, it's, it's your lack of obedience to God's law. That's what's making you a sinner. You're not obeying God's law, therefore you're sinning. So when you turn from not obeying God's law, you're going to turn to obeying God's law. That's how you turn from your sins. So if you have to turn from your sins to be saved, then what you're saying is you have to obey God's law in order to be saved. That's the works of the law, which we already showed are not a requirement for our salvation. But it's a, it's a very big, uh, very, a lot of brainwashing going on out there about turning from your sins to be saved. But if you could break it down for, if you find someone that's willing to listen, you could break it down for them. Because one of the, the most important things we can do in giving the gospel is just break things down very simple, very easy to be understood, and use the verses that are clear. Jonah 3.10, there's no doubt about what it's saying. People might reject it because they don't like what it says. But what it actually says is clear. It defines turning from evil uh, as works, turning from wicked ways as works. Since salvation is not determined by our good works, we've already established that, and only by our faith, 
The next thing is, is then, well, how can our bad works take away our salvation? Because some people will say, oh no, salvation is a free gift. It's completely by grace through faith. You know, you just have to receive it, believe in Christ, and you're saved. But then they'll say, but, but, I mean, if you commit murder, if you don't follow the Ten if you don't, then God's going to take that gift away from you, and then you're not saved anymore. See, there's all different ways that people try to, to back in works into the equation. Instead of just accepting that it's totally free and bought and paid for. And once you receive it, it's yours. Because they'll say murder or suicide. Well, if it wasn't based on our good works, then how can our bad works take it away? It doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. I didn't deserve salvation when I got saved, when I was 20 years old. Didn't deserve it. I was a sinner. I don't deserve it. But guess what? I did get saved. I'm 41 years old today. I still don't deserve salvation. I'm not going to deserve salvation tomorrow, or in a year, or in 10 years. I, I don't deserve it. I'm still a sinner. I don't deserve it. I'll never deserve it. So it's not based, me keeping salvation has nothing to do with being good enough. Because I'm not good enough. Nobody's good enough. That's why it has nothing, that's why Ephesians 2 says not of yourselves. Like not of yourselves at all. Not to receive it, not to keep it, not to maintain it. It has nothing to do with you. It has to do with Jesus and what he did. Because he gets all the credit and all the glory and all the honor. I don't get none of it. It doesn't matter how much I clean up my life. I still am not worthy of having that great gift. But Jesus was worthy. And all the direction and all the attention goes to him. If I never deserved the gift to begin with, how can I undeserve it later? That, again, it doesn't make sense. We can't lose it. We do believe in once saved, always saved. Once you receive salvation, you are saved forever. Now, when you say that to people, oftentimes what people get confused with is they'll say, whoa, so you're Calvinist. Because Calvinists will use that term. They'll say they're once saved, always saved. Or, or you know, but I always make sure that I'm clear we're not Calvinist. And uh, if you're not familiar with Calvinism, don't worry about it. It's just, it's just a heretical false doctrine. But um, basically, they believe one of the things, they, they have an acronym, it's called TULIP, and, and, and each letter stands for one point of their doctrine, of this, this, uh, this doctrine that John Calvin came up with. He didn't come up with the acronym, but it's basically the same belief.